Hi, welcome to Sniffing the Internet of Things with Wireshark, SendSniff, and Freak Labs. In this tutorial, we'll be using open source tools and Freak Labs boards to sniff wireless sensor traffic over an 802.15.4 network. In it, I'll be showing you how to choose the board, set up the software, set up the bridge, and get the data into Wireshark. Let's get started. Let's take a look at choosing which board is good for sniffing. I put together a simple Arduino sketch for stress testing data throughput on a Freak Labs board. The first board I'll be using is the Freak USB 2.4 GHz board using an AVR Atmega 328P. The Atmega 328P has 2 KB of RAM and in promiscuous mode, the maximum amount of receive buffer we can use is 1 KB. The remaining 0.5 KB is for the protocol stack and 0.5 KB for the Arduino libraries and subsystem. On a different board, I'll be transmitting 1,000 packets as a broadcast storm. A measure of throughput would be how many packets are received out of the 1,000. The reason is that when the buffer is full, packets will be dropped since they can't fit into any available memory. After the packet storm, you can see that the buffer gets, gets full after 53 packets, which is where the packet loss starts. Finally, you can see that we receive 598 packets out of 1,000. This is a pretty extreme case though, where the packets are sent at almost minimal size with no gap in between. If you'll be sniffing light network traffic, then this board should be fine. When traffic gets heavier, you'll need a board that can buffer more packets to keep up with it. Now I'm going to do the same stress test on a Freak USB 1284P board. This board uses an AppMega 1284P, which has 16 kilobytes of RAM and 128 kilobytes of flash. The RAM is the important parameter here though. Since there's a lot of RAM in the Chibi Arduino stack, I allocate 10 kilobytes of memory for the receive buffer. If you remember, I can only allocate one kilobyte for the AppMega 328P due to RAM constraints. With 10 kilobytes of RAM for the receive buffer, the Freak USB 1284P has no problem capturing all packets and dumping them to the serial terminal. For high performance applications, I recommend the Freak USB 1284P since the extra RAM and flash will come in handy in high traffic situations. The first thing we'll be doing is opening up the Arduino IDE. In this case, I'm using Arduino version 1.6.7 from arduino.cc. Next, I'm opening up example 10 from the Chibi Arduino library. It's the SenseNIF example, which provides the bridge for the SenseNIF software. In the introductory comment in the sketch, I discuss a bit about the software and give a reminder that promiscuous mode needs to be enabled when compiling and loading the sniffer software. To do that, we have to open up the chibi userconfig.h file in the Arduino library directory. Once inside this file, scroll down until you find the chibi promiscuous mode macro and set it to 1. This configures the chibi Arduino stack for promiscuous mode, which is needed for running the protocol analyzer. After that, we're going to configure the correct board, model, and serial port. I'm assuming you have the Arduino IDE hardware support file set up already. If not, please check the user manual on how to do this. I'll be using the Freak USB 1284P 2.4 GHz USB dongle. It has a lot of memory and supports all standard baud rates, so it's a handy tool for using as a wireless sniffer. Once we have all that set up, then we just click on the build button and download the code into the device. The next thing we're going to do is download simple code into another device which we'll use as a traffic generator for sniffing. In this case, we'll be using an identical device, the Freak USB 1284P 2.4 GHz USB dongle, and download example 4, the command line example, to it. This can generate simple text strings that can be sent through the air to another device. These text strings will be what we sniff. Don't forget to turn off promiscuous mode when you build this code. Finally, we're going to go to the Freak Labs GitHub account and grab the SenseSniff Freak Labs GitHub link. The SenseSniff Freak Labs software is just a fork of a wonderful piece of open source work called SenseSniff, which is written in Python and provides a bridge to Wireshark using named pipes. As a great command line interface, is extensible and supports PCAP dumps for offline analysis in Wireshark, as well as real-time analysis via named pipes into, wire, into Wireshark. SenseSniff Freak Labs is just a fork of SenseSniff with different default settings to make it easier to set up the Wireshark bridge. Now that we have our SenseSniff Freak Labs link, we're going to drop into a terminal and do a git clone of the code. Alternatively, you can download it from GitHub and just unzip it into a directory. Once that's done and you have SenseSniff Freak Labs, then just type python sensniff.py. The defaults should already work with the example 10 SenseSniff code and you should be up and running.
Once the SendSniff software is up, it will automatically create the named pipe to use for Wireshark. You can also change the channel on the fly by typing in the channel number. Next, we're going to start up Wireshark from the command line. To do this, you type Wireshark dash k dash i slash temp slash sendsniff. Slash temp slash sendsniff is the path to the named pipe that will be shared between the sendsniff software and Wireshark. We also need to configure one of our USB dongles to transmit data. We're going to use PuTTY to access it via serial terminal, although you can also use a serial monitor built into the Arduino IDE. To send data, we're going to use the Chibi Arduino send command, which will transmit data over the air. The other dongle is in promiscuous mode and attached to the SendSniff software. Any data that comes into the wireless sniffer board will go to SendSniff, into the named pipe, and finally to Wireshark. From there, it will be displayed as Wireshark protocol data. I just sent one packet of data to address 3. I'm now going to send a few more packets of data to various addresses and then take a look at the protocol fields. Wireshark is currently configured for IEEE 802.15.4. It will automatically decode the incoming data into 802.15.4 packets, which we can then view. You can also click down into the packet data and view the individual fields. It will highlight the fields and display the decoded data in the frame window. The Chibi Arduino stack runs raw 802.15.4 frames. It's a simple stack with simple functionality that just works. If you're sniffing more complex networks, you can also decode the upper layer protocols that run above 802.15.4, such as 6-Lopan or ZigBee. Sometimes it's a bit painful to have two terminal windows open to start up SendSniff and Wireshark separately. A neat little trick is to start them up in two separate processes with SendSniff in the foreground. To do this, you type Wireshark-K-I slash temp slash SendSniff ampersand python sendsniff.py double ampersand fg. This opens up both Wireshark and SendSniff in a single window in two separate processes and with SendSniff in the foreground. This can also be embedded into a shell script for easy access. That way you can do real-time logging without fiddling around with a bunch of windows. Another really handy feature is SendSniff's ability to log all traffic into a PCAP file. This file can then be opened later for offline analysis in Wireshark. To do this, you open SendSniff using the dash "-p", option and specify the PCAP file you want to log the data. In this case, I'm using temp.pcap. Once the data logging is finished, you close SendSniff and it will give you stats on the data dumped to the PCAP file. You can then open Wireshark with the PCAP file and analyze the traffic using whatever filters you need. Here I'm writing some text strings over the air and sniffing them into the PCAP file, but without Wireshark open on the other side. It gives a warning that there's nothing on the other end reading the data, but that's okay. We just want it dumped to the PCAP file. Once I'm done with the logging, I'm opening Wireshark up with the dash R option and the PCAP dump file. I can then view the contents of the traffic offline. Thanks for watching Sniffing the Internet of Things with Wireshark, SenseSniff, and Freak Labs. If you enjoyed this video, please support Freak Labs and indie open source hardware by buying products from the Freak Labs store. All hardware used in this video can be found there. See you next time!